I am the lead engineer at Secor, supporting our technology development and ultimately just helping to get the technologies that we want and would like to have to our implementation partners and to further our research, getting that into the hands of the scientists so that they can do the work that they want to do and be able to focus on the science side of things. At Secor, I am the Caribbean Restoration Coordinator. I am heavily involved in the daily restoration work. So when corals spawn, they release these little bundles, uh, like packages of sperm and eggs. And because the eggs are all packaged in one bundle, they are positively buoyant. So they float up to the surface, which is really nice for us because that means we can capture those gametes without having to touch the coral. We can do that with these uh, self-made coral spawning collection nets. We place these nets on top of the coral and then it sits there. There's a little float at the top so that it stays up. We place this little tube. All the spawn of the coral goes up into the net and they float up through the funnel. So in the end, all the gametes end up in the, in the top of the tube and when the, when the tube is full or when the coral stops spawning, we take off the tube put a cap on it and then this is what we bring back to the lab. And we can do this for many, many corals on the reef uh, so that we can bring as many parents as possible together in a lab setting. So we have the, uh, it's the multi-colony collector um, or MCC for short. The idea behind it is basically trying to remove as much diver work as possible from the equation of the, of the collection process. Uh, so it's less divers able to collect more. So rather than focusing on a single individual colony, with this we can collect from many different colonies at once. Well, here on Bonaire, we, we've got the Jeff Davis Memorial Reef where we're setting up the MCC and testing it right now. Well, this is a pretty excellent spot to be able to set it up. They pretty consistently see spawning within this window and with, with such a gigantic patch of coral and so many different genotypes, it's pretty ideal for us to be able to continue to test and improve in this device. If you think of a shade canopy, a four posted shade canopy, but rather than the fabric being on the outside of the frame, it's on the inside of the frame. And then we've placed sand anchors at four corners of this reef patch. It, it absolutely is a challenge doing that at night. Well, I think we figured out a pretty good uh, process of, of how to set it up in a safe way and in a way that we're able to you know, pretty effectively and quickly set this thing up and, and, and deploy it. We can't talk. Uh, we use a lot of flashlight signals, so giving okays. It's a big circle on the ground or in the coral with your flashlight. If there's something going wrong, we'll tap on the pole, like any sort of audible noise. Everyone on the team knows, hey, stop what you're doing. You know, we need to reset. There's something going wrong. Um, let's, let's take a second, let's figure it out, and then we'll get going again. I have to admit that the first time they talked about making this frame, I was a little bit skeptical about it. I thought, you know, wave action, uh, how are we going to do this? But I really liked the way it worked. It was really easy to set up. It stayed in place quite nicely. I think it performed well. So, yeah, so with the multi-colony collector, we saw spawning two nights, which was awesome. You know, we were, that was part of our goal, was to see spawn, collect spawn with it.
And we did collect some, not as much as we were hoping for. It probably is gonna need to be some adjustments to the design so it's uh, able to collect it better. Another design that we're testing right now in Florida um, with our, our partners there is a collector that could be installed on a nursery tree. Then it's just funneling all of that, those coral that would spawn straight upwards in a chimney and we have a collector at the top to, to do the exact same process. And um, so, you know, we're working on all different angles of how we can apply this, you know, just in mass collection at scale to, to help us utilize existing infrastructure um, to be able to uh, recognize how we could scale and, and improve larval propagation techniques. When new technologies are developed, of course we need to test it. And testing can go by trial and error, and we can because you know we're we're kind of running out of time with uh, when it comes to coral reef restoration. We need to move fast. However, when something doesn't work, we definitely need to do some research and make sure that it works better the next time. So we need to figure out what's going wrong. So really, what, what's nice about working for Seacor is that research and the technology development go hand in hand, and uh, we do a little bit of research here and a little bit of trial and error there, and hopefully the two can come together so we can move forward as fast as possible.